Chris Seatons along with Charles Feldman. Well, here we are. Memorial <laughs> Day weekend getaway in full... I was going to say swing, but it's really full flight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, or, exactly. or a car or a bus. Or, Getaway or, day. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, airports, of course, are busy. With us now is CBS News travel editor Peter Greenberg. Peter, you know, we've been hearing a lot lately about crowds at airports, although I have to say LAX has been pretty good so far, but not necessarily the rest of the country. What have you been hearing and what have you been seeing? Well, the reason why LAX is doing better today is because so many people left yesterday. Uh, That's probably true. Happens. Yeah, <laughs> it happens like on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Smart people say, you know what? Let's get out of town two days early. But the real problem is not Memorial Day. The real problem is what do you do after? Because the TSA still has a staffing problem in terms of numbers. They have a staffing problem in terms of, of training. And they have a serious staffing problem in terms of the culture of the TSA. You can't run a security agency like a Woolworths in 1955 thinking that everybody comes to work at 9 and goes home at 5. Yeah, let's talk uh, a little bit more about that that culture. They, they also failed major tests about a year ago, but I know that you, you've you got some definite thoughts about the culture behind the TSA. I do. I mean, look, security is not an eight-hour-a-day shift. Security is 24-7. If you go out to LAX, what are your three push times? Between 6 and 8 in the morning, 4 and 6 in the evening, and between 8 o'clock and midnight for the international departures out of Bradley. And that's when these guys half the time take their break. That's when they close down the TSA pre-check lines on the domestic flights. That's absurd. And here's the interesting thing. Everybody's being encouraged now to join TSA pre-check because, in theory, it's a great idea, right? You're a trusted traveler. You don't have to take off your jacket, your shoes, take out your laptop. The lines move smoother and faster. Here's the problem. 15,000 people a day now are applying for TSA pre-check. And guess what? The TSA can't even handle the applications, and that presumes... Their lines are even going to be open when these people show up. And the other night, there was no TSA pre-check when I was at LAX. Earlier this week, I was flying out of JFK on a a crunch time in the morning. No TSA pre-check. And this morning on CBS This Morning, we had Jay Johnson, the head of the DHS, and he was sitting next to me in the green room saying, your reporting is all wrong because the average wait time for TSA pre-check is just five minutes or less. I said, Mr. Secretary, with all due respect, it's five minutes or less if the lines are open. Well, you know, well, well, let me ask you, Peter, because, and we've asked this question of others in the past uh, week or two, are we being kind of scammed then? Because, and I hear, here's why I'm using that word, because we're being told in part that uh, the way to fix this problem, as you also mentioned, uh, the TSA is saying, well, we need to have more money, we need to hire more agents. If only more people would shell out the almost 90 bucks and register with PreCheck, then the lines would get shorter. And, you know, it, it's kind of like they're holding a gun to people's heads saying, you know, pay up, uh, join the pre-check, and things will get better. But if 15,000 people a day are trying to join pre-check, it doesn't take a math genius, and by the way, I failed math in high school, but I can do basic adding and subtracting (laughs) to let you know that the TSA pre-check lines will then become overly long. Look, the bottom line here is, if I'm a trusted traveler, and I'm going to join TSA pre-check, you keep the lines open. And you don't keep the lines open based on your break time. You keep the lines open based on airline schedules. They're not exactly news bulletins. They're published in advance. But here's you know the thing. But, 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 you know but, 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 today, go ahead. Go ahead, today at LAX, I would not be surprised if every major international airline tonight took at least a 20-minute delay because the passengers can't get to the planes. Then they have to take another 20-minute delay because the passengers who still couldn't get to the planes they have to remove their luggage. Isn't there another issue here, Peter? Uh, because the the beauty of pre-check is supposed to be that you don't have to take your shoes off, you don't take exactly. your laptop out. But uh, I've been in other countries uh, in Western Europe and Asia where they don't do that anyway, and the security is just fine. Exactly. We're fighting the last war. We're still fighting the shoe bomber. Uh, look, there's nobody listening to the show who doesn't want great airport security. But my argument has always been that before 9-11, airline and airport security was nothing more than an attempt to psychologically deter, emotionally disturb people from taking a plane to Cuba. And after 9-11, I happen to believe that most airline security is nothing more than an attempt to make people who don't fly very often feel better. But those of us who do fly very often, we sort of know better. Thank you, Peter. Have a great long weekend. Happy Peter travels. Guys. Okay. At uh, CBS News uh, Travel Editor Peter Greenberg. And, and by the way, we have a, a lot more coming yeah. up about the issue with TSA, including, I think, a lot of people may be surprised where you're going to find some TSA agents, and it's not at the airport. Coming up in just five minutes when KNX In Depth continues, we'll talk with Congressman Darrell Issa, who says he thinks airport security ought to be privatized. Ooh, <laughs> 
You're listening to KNX In-Depth with Chris Edens. I'm Charles Feldman. Some people think that airport security should be overseen by the government, but run by a private company. That's what Republican Congressman Darrell Issa from San Diego County wants. What we're proposing is to embrace what is working within the TSA system. Uh, just a couple hundred miles north of us in uh, San Francisco, they're under a private contractor system overseen by TSA or, if you will, Homeland Security. And that system is working better. They have lower turnover. They have less uh, failure to, uh, if you will, they're three times more likely to catch a a gun or a bomb. Uh, And uh, they have shorter lines and greater flexibility. You know, uh, Congressman, uh, oh, a week or so ago, we had on this uh, program someone from an airport in, was it Montana, Chris? Montana. Yeah. And she was telling us about how her airport made the transition from TSA to a private agency, but she was also telling us what a grueling process it was to do that because the TSA pretty much controlled the whole situation. She had to make sure that they approved the plan, they had veto power over the contractors, and apparently it dragged on for many, many yeah, years. like four years. Four, yeah, four yeah. or five years, until they were finally able to make the transition. So what I'm getting at, Congressman, is if we were to move to privatization of airport security, should the TSA be even involved in the selection or enforcement process? Well, I think Congress should be involved, and inspector generals need to have strict ability to look and make sure they're doing their job. Uh, there's no question that Homeland Security over the last 15 years has developed expertise, and we need to make sure that's used. But we also need to, in a transition, not allow it, this form of protectionism. Remember that TSA has more than a 10% turnover per year. So a transition in four years could be 40% of the workforce uh, without laying off or firing a single TSA employee. So in many ways, TSA has nothing to fear except a shrinking of their union. In your proposal, I see you talk about better safety, shorter lines. You also mention uh, at least a billion dollars in savings. How would those, how would those savings uh, work into the plan? Well, it's been shown that the num- because of lower turnover more than anything else, employees who are private contractor employees have a greater throughput. As a result, particularly in busy airports, you need less of them. Also, you mentioned Montana. One of the places in which TSA works the poorest from a standpoint of cost-benefit are these small airports with one or two flights a day. It's hard to get uh, the flights in and out. Uh, when you consider that it's a very inflexible workforce. It it does have some part-time employees, but TSA and the government tend to think of everything as full-time career employees. That doesn't work in a place that has half a dozen flights a day, which can include places like the capital of Montana. So as people listen to this uh, on the Memorial Day weekend, fearing in some cases long lines at airports, as well as as the summer progresses, Are there any short-term fixes that uh, people can look forward to so that this doesn't become torture over the summer? Well, the short-term fix is is a partial privatization. Uh, TSA has the authority and could uh, look to the airlines and others and say, provide us with 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 full-time equivalent people who come in when we need them and do specific jobs that are not part of the core security. Every one of us has watched not one, but half a dozen TSA employees, let's say in Los Angeles, uh, that all they're really doing is moving those buckets you put your shoes in back and forth. That is not a job that has to have a government-skilled employee. So during surge times, if TSA wants to, they can certainly push uh, the envelope to help relieve it. And, of course, the airlines are very willing to, if you will, loan those personnel at peak times in order to get better service for their customers. It's a win-win in this peak season. Yeah, but as you know, as you yourself uh, stated, Congressman, there, there's sort of a, a problem here, which is that even if you had other workers come in to do the, the tasks, as you just pointed out, of you know moving the bins, whatever, and you leave the security 
to the TSA government employees. Uh, as you know, the tests repeatedly show that those employees are not very good at security. Well, there's no short-term fix for the reality. Only 5% of the time will they catch in these tests that have been done uh, by Homeland Security itself a bomb, a gun, and so on. And that's certainly scary as can be. The other thing, and, and I think this is something that's an intangible, we need to return to the airlines and to the local municipalities, in other words, the port authorities. We need to make them responsible for long lines and good service and allow the TSA, or Homeland Security, if you will, to oversee the behind the scenes. Are these people competent? Are they trained? Are they doing what they need to do? Congressman Issa, thank you. Thank you. And a little bit later, we're going to talk about TSA, TSA agents moonlighting at political events, talking about politics. If you were looking forward <laughs> to that Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders wait, debate... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> 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 if you were looking forward to it, forget it. Not going to happen. No way. You're listening to KNX In Depth, sponsored by your Southern California BMW Centers. Along with Charles Feldman, I'm Chris Seedens. You know, if you go to uh, the KNX 1070 Twitter uh, feed, you will see a photograph taken this morning by our own John Beard of a TSA agent hard at work, only not at an airport. Uh, the TSA agent was at a uh, rally in San Pedro, a political rally. And in fact, since 2004, we're told this has become fairly common. But at a time when the TSA is complaining, there aren't enough TSA agents to go around at the airports. Let's talk now with Marshall McLean, who's the president of the LAX Police Officers Union. Marshall, this strikes some people as being, well, let me put it this way, odd. <laughs> oh, Chris, uh, Charles, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it, it, it is odd, and it's been going on for quite some time. It's not just political rallies. They, they even had TSA at the Super Bowl. Well, but here's... Yeah. Go oh, ahead, Chris. Okay. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's, it's odd, but does it actually hurt security at the airport? Well, it, it hurts when you're talking about the core mission is for screening and passengers at airports, and they're somewhere else, especially well, when, when, when we, we're having these long lines. Well, and, and, and here's the thing. We asked both the TSA and the Secret Service, and I say Secret Service because what's happening is the TSA is sort of subcontracting to the U.S. Secret Service for these rallies. They are uh, off-duty agents, but they're being paid by Secret Service. Uh, neither agency wanted to provide anybody to come on this program to talk to us, although they both gave us statements. And, and here's the one thing that was interesting, Marshall, that this year alone, apparently, since this political campaign season uh, swung into high gear, the TSA says that their agents have been at more than 3,000 events. 3,300 3, times they've been used at candidate events. Uh, that's absolutely ridiculous. It, it would be probably even far cheaper to use a contracted security system to go ahead and do those rallies. But this is about optics. This is about allowing the TSA to have that image out there to show that they're doing something. It's no different than some of the other things that they're doing in terms of the behavioral detection officer program that they, they claim to have, even though the GAO said it was a billion dollars that was wasted and they didn't actually do anything. I heard you had Congressman Issa on before. I mean, it's really telling when you have congressmen like Issa, congressmen like Micah, who actually helped begin the TSA program, who are now trying to actually get rid of it. Okay. Mr. McLean, thank you. Thank you. Marshall McLean, he is the president of the LAX Police Officers Union. A reminder, you can hear a repeat of this program, 8 o'clock tonight, coming up in five minutes when KNX In-Depth continues. What President Obama's visit to Hiroshima means for whomever follows him in office.